primary schools are now required to teach spoken Arabic, part of a historic decision made earlier this month. But the language is still far from being mainstream in, amongst Jewish Israelis. It's a country where speaking each other's language is extremely important. Tal Heinrich reports for Mideast Focus. Arabic is the second official language in Israel after Hebrew. It is used by Arab Israelis who make up over one-fifth of Israel's population. The majority of them also speak Hebrew fluently as a second language. But among Jewish Israelis, the situation is completely different. In a country that strives to promote dialogue, very few Israeli Jews can speak or understand Arabic. Up until 10 to 15 years ago, Arabic was a mandatory subject on the school program. But this faded over time, and I think it is also the Israeli reality, Israeli politics, education ministers with different priorities, budgets and teachers' training that contributed to this. Today, school curriculums require the study of literary Arabic in junior and high schools, but this is not enforced. Arabic lessons are widespread in Hebrew-speaking schools from the 7th through the 9th grades, although most schools offer French as an alternative. In high school, students need to decide whether to major in one of the foreign languages or in other school subjects, ranging from science to social studies. In the late 70s, the number of students who chose Arabic as their major and took the final tests was lower than 1,000. Although in the last five years the number was a bit higher than 2,000, the examinee's percentage has remained pretty much the same and is standing between 2 to 4 percent of all high school students taking final exams. For comparison, in 1995, 13 percent chose biology and 11 percent chose physics. Moreover, Arabic teachers at Irani Hay High School report a decrease from early 2000s. Until the years 2000, maybe even less, we had students who took the final exams in Arabic. No more ever since. Zero. Students lack the motivation. For them, the Arabic language as I see that is related to the Arab itself. We don't like the Arab, we don't need the Arab, and we don't want the Arab. So why do we need his language? It's totally equivalent, unfortunately. In certain years, the number of students choosing Arabic as major was so low that it wasn't even worth opening a class and hiring a teacher. The class was completely empty. Very few students chose Arabic as a major. I was left with no work. In mathematics, there's a lot of work. A common language can improve dialogue between Israeli and Palestinian societies. Israelis are well aware of that. So what keeps them from learning Arabic? I think when they graduate with Arabic, they still don't know how to speak. They learn the technique of the language, the grammar, but eventually when they are out there, they can't even say one sentence in Arabic. The first reason to learn Arabic in our country is to bridge cultures. We are living in a mixed society and unfortunately it is very divided. We have to put more focus on spoken Arabic and the useful part of the language, the communication. Change might not come in the distant future. According to a new announcement by the Israeli Ministry of Education, in late May of this year, spoken Arabic is to become mandatory in all Jewish primary schools in Israel. The decision will be put into effect next year as part of a pilot program in several schools and will later be compulsory in all schools in the country. I think it is a welcome measure, very positive. It is in the right direction for us as a society and also for the future of Arabic studies in high schools. With me to look closer at this, I-24 News Arabic anchor Renine Boulos. Good evening. Hi, good evening. So if we're talking about this new initiative in Israeli schools, it's important to make the distinction first between literary and spoken Arabic. Yes, um, spoken Arabic is, is the Arabic that um, it depends where you live. Like the Palestinian spoken Arabic is, is different than the Lebanese, Iraqi, Syrian, uh, Moroccan. What connects the Arab world is the classic uh, Arabic, the Arabic that we write, the Arabic that we read from books, the the Arabic that we listen in the news, so the, the Arabic of the Quran. So this is the Arabic that connects the entire world, and the spoken Arabic, it depends on, on the region, on the, on the people. And the status of both for Israelis is not so good, it sounds like. It's not so good, yeah. It's not good at all, actually. Um, even though Arabic is a formal uh, language in Israel, and it, it's been 
it's taught in schools. Um, students, after they graduate school, they don't speak Arabic, even that they learn Arabic uh, at school. Not, uh, not spoken Arabic and not uh, classic Arabic. They basically don't know Arabic. So um, the, the teaching Arabic in schools in Israel is it, it, very weak. And um, I. There was, um, in, in Israeli high schools, it's yeah. important to note there's sort of, you have to choose a, sort of like a major in U.S. universities. Yes. What is it like to major in Arabic in uh, Israel today? This, I'll tell you even a story with, uh, that happened with my friend. Um, she majored uh, in Arabic and she told me, Renin, I, I have five units majoring in Arabic. And I said, wow, I want to go and see um, what you've been taught in, in class. So I went with her and I realized that they teach them uh, how to communicate in the army, how to use Arabic as in the, in the army, how to, to talk in checkpoints and and um, it and after and my, my friend talk and not just talk not to talk with your friend or with your neighbor or to talk for peace it's it's um, it's a language of how to deal with the enemy and um, and after my friend graduated they asked her immediately to come to the intelligence uh, unit uh, in the army and she told them that she's gonna use the language for something else but um, but yeah, so I we're often here talking about the conflict and talking about education and how in the end everything starts with education. No better example than this is just the language. Speak each other's language, yeah, and language literally and figuratively. When you know the language, you know the culture of the person, you respect him. Renee Bulos, thanks very much Thank for this. You.